are listening to Walk It Out with Trisha Goyer, where we discover what it looks like to follow God and be swept away on the journey of a lifetime. Author of over 70 books, mom of 10, yes, 10, homeschooler and speaker, Trisha Goyer will explore what radical obedience to God's word looks like. It's time to hear from God lovers who've dared to say yes. Listen in to Heart to Heart Chats and learn how others overcame doubts and fears. Discover how God used ordinary people to impact others one step at a time. If you're ready to get radical, get going, and make a difference in this world, you're at the right place. Here's your host, prolific writer, world traveler, people lover, and mega nap taker, Trisha Goyer. Today on Walk It Out, I'm talking with my new friend, Lindsay Myastis. Lindsay is the host of the Living Easy podcast, which I just started listening to, and I love it, by the way, um, where she discusses faith and relationships and strives to remind women that they are the... They are more than their mess. She's also a lifestyle blogger, wife, and mom based in Albuquerque. Her work has been featured in the Huffington Post, Relevant Magazine, Faith It, Focus on the Family, and so much more. She loves to read, eat tacos, and binge watch Netflix with her husband. So welcome. all true. All true. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. It's so nice to be here. I am so glad that you're here. And, you know, I get all kinds of inquiries about being on the podcast. And when you say you wanted to chat about healing and marriage from a messy past, I said, yes, please. Like that one line, I'm like, yes, let's talk about that. I got married when I was 18. I was a teen mom and met and married my husband. We've been married for 30 years now, which is awesome. Good for you. That messy past is, it's tough. It's tough. It brought a lot of stuff into the marriage. So I would just love to hear just a little bit about your story and why you were so passionate to talk about this. Sure. So I started my blog um, as a brand new mama who just needed an outlet. And as I started looking through blog post after blog post, I was like, nobody talks about the hard stuff. Like I need to know the hard stuff. I need somebody who's in this with me and not the like, it was hard, but now we've moved on. I just, I think we sometimes forget that there are trenches and that other people are in them. And we feel this shame for living in the trenches or for talking about the trenches. And there's, there's so much healing and freedom that can be had when we're open. And so I started this blog just to talk about the raw stuff. And that was, um, about four years ago. And that's, I still write on it. I'm sorry. I still write on the blog. It's sparrowsandlily.com. And then this one day, I just felt it so heavily on my heart to share my testimony and my story. And I kid you not, Trisha, I, I'm writing, typing and like publishing and tears are just streaming down my face because there's still this shame that I'm struggling with. I know that people that I love and who know me are going to see parts of my story that they've never heard before and that strangers will. And so there was this weird mix of freedom and joy and relief releasing this story and God completely took hold of it. And within hours I had, um, online magazines contacting me. Can we please share this? And can we please share your story? We'd love to share. And it took me a moment cause I'm thinking one, this is a dream. Like this is what I've been wanting, but two, the world is going to hear about my sexual promiscuity and my shame and my filth and all these things like to the world. Right. And so focus on the family shares it. And it was like shared over 2 million times and then relevant magazine shared it and it was shared over a million times. And so there was this weird battle, but what I came to and, and by God's grace, what happened was I received email after email after email from girls who had lived the exact same life as me. And just to backtrack a little bit, basically I was raped when I was 14 Um, I totally put myself quote unquote in that position. I was drinking. I was a brand new freshman in high school and I was at a party with seniors. No idea how I got there. Um, and it just took a turn for the worst. I thought we were flirting innocently. He got incredibly aggressive and then just took over and he left immediately. I'm in tears and I can talk about it kind of the way that I talk about it because I don't dig deep into the details and because I've shared it so much. Um, 
I've, I've, I am actually sharing in full detail on the Living Easy podcast in a few weeks. And so that my whole story is going to be on there. But I he left and then it was never dealt with. So I told my family um, and for many different reasons, it was just never handled. And I think one of if I'm honest, the main reasons is he was a football player at our school. He had a great reputation. He would never, ever do something like that. And um, although I was a virgin at the time, I apparently was making things up. And so to be honest, I started believing those things myself. I started believing that maybe I did ask for it. Maybe I was wrong. And so when the Me Too movement came out, it was actually very emotional for me because you saw so many women who had been told they needed to shut up about it. And he had, I mean, this guy who did this had threatened me after he found out I had told people just walked up and like put his fingers to my head, like it was a gun and basically told me like, stop talking about this or who knows what's going to happen. Um, and I don't think he was going to do anything, but as a freshman in high school, when this guy is a popular senior in high school, I was afraid to say anything and I dropped it and I did not heal. So in the not healing process, I, because nobody acknowledged what happened because it felt like it was my fault because it wasn't, it just wasn't important to anyone. I dealt with it. The only way a 14 year old girl in my position knew how, Um, and I chose sin. I chose radical sin. I didn't know Jesus at the time, right? but I just felt obligated to sleep with anyone to give my body to anyone. And I didn't like sleep around, but I had boyfriend after boyfriend after boyfriend. Like when I say that I had a boyfriend at the time and then I would make sure I had someone on backup in case Mm -hmm. that relationship fell through because I was lonely and I was dependent and I was terrified of being alone and not being wanted. That validation was, was so necessary for me because I didn't have a foundation. I didn't know that Jesus loved me and desired a good life for me, a good husband for me who would treat me with honor and respect and kindness and, and that God could satisfy that longing in my heart. I didn't know those things. And I wish someone would have told me And so that's why I started what I started. And that's why when that, um, when that blog post kind of blew up, I realized how great of a need there was to talk about this shame and this filth, but to remind women that there is redemption in that and that you don't have to live there anymore. You can choose and make a decision to surrender your life and to ask for forgiveness um, for your past sin and to move forward with Jesus in a completely new life and new skin and with new decisions. Yeah. I'm so thankful that you're telling your story and I can relate to so much of that. I mean, personally, I became sexually active at a young age, just looking for love in all the wrong places. And there had been some sexual abuse um, before that. And working with teen moms, I have a teen mom support group here in Little Rock where we live. And so many of the moms, um, in fact, we had someone come in and talk about, you know, uh, sexual abuse and rape and during the meeting, every single girl raised their hand that that had been part of their experience. And because they never really themselves had a chance to say yes or no, it was just forced upon them. Then they felt like, well, what's the point now? Like Mm -hmm. it's done and this is how I get love. And this is how I have someone that gives me attention. And I see that so many in these young women that just longing for love, the longing for that connection with another person. And, you know, at the time also, I grew up knowing about Jesus. I didn't know like how much he just loved me and just wanted me as his own. And again, looking back and seeing all those holes in my heart. And I think so many women out there, they feel that they feel like I need love. I need to get this filled. And that's what the world is saying. Like every um, romantic movie or book or everything that they're showing that that's how you show love. And we're like, no, there's so much more. So I'm so thankful that you're sharing that story. But I also know, you know, as we get married, <laughs> then we come with all this baggage. And that has been my experience, too. I think my husband, and he was a virgin. He ha- was a Christian. He saved himself. And here I am, like, I don't even want to tell you the extent yeah. of I don't want to share my story. <laughs> and he knew about my, he knew I had an abortion. And 
but it's like taken over years as I've been able to be vulnerable with him and share everything. But, you know, and really we walk into marriage with all these walls up and all these broken places. So I just love to share, uh, or have you share just a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. So I think one important thing to realize is that for me, when I went from relationship to relationship or I fit these guys in like broken puzzle pieces because I knew they weren't right. I knew they weren't who God had in store for me. And even at the time, even though I didn't know God, I knew something was wrong. Like we all have that inner voice, our conscience. Yeah. And, and I, I know that God was pursuing me in that time. And I was just so stubborn because I wanted to live my life. I wanted to sleep with guys. I wanted to drink. I wanted, even though I was so empty and lonely and sad, and there were like very, very small, minute moments where those things would be fun but then it would end in regret or disappointment or sadness. And I kept telling myself, like, I'm just going to fill myself with these small things. And I was filling myself with these men who didn't fit. They were not men that I knew I was intended to be with. They were, they did not treat me with honor and with respect. And, and I didn't, I didn't even feel, even though I felt like I loved them, I felt more so like I just needed them. And I think that's a very dangerous place to be. And so as I was in these relationships, I'm giving pieces of my heart away. And you think that by the time you turn 30, I'm 30 now, that relationships you had when you're 14, 15 are just going to disappear. But that's not how our minds work. We still have memories and we still have that brokenness because they have a piece of my body and they have a piece of my heart that I gave to them essentially. And so now in my marriage, there have been a lot of conversations that my husband and I have had to have. He is so incredibly gracious and kind. He is the kindest man I've ever met. And he has been so understanding. And he knew my story as well. When we got married, he knew everything. I told him everything. We probably over communicate in our (laughs) marriage. Um, But I didn't think that I would still have to deal with like bad dreams. I still have still Mm -hmm. to this day, we've been together for 10 years, married for eight. And I still have dreams about my ex-boyfriends occasionally. And I'm like, I haven't thought of these people in truly in years. And then Satan throws this dream in to remind me of my sin and of my past. And I have to wake up. And what I have found that really helps in our marriage is for me to lay it out on the table right away, because temptation is a real thing. And I never, ever want to say that I would never fall into sin. I would never fall into adultery. I would never, because I have absolutely no idea if that is true. All I know is that I rely on the work and the power of Jesus Christ who can move through me and give me the strength to not do those things. And that for me is where I say, I need to put this out in the light. So Satan loses his power over it. And if I start to think about these guys or have thoughts about my past relationships and like, what ifs, or if I'm in a fight with my husband and I'm like, well, how easy would it be? Like they would be interested in, you know, it's just Mm -hmm. so stupid how those lies come into our mind. And so I have to voice them right away to my husband. And we've communicated that that's, there's a way of doing that, that is healthy and not burdensome or damaging to the marriage. But I'll just tell him, Hey, I love you so much. I have no idea where this came from, but I had a dream. Can you just pray for me really quickly? And he'll pray for me and he'll ask like, is there anything going on? Are you feeling discontent in our marriage? Are you struggling? How's your relationship with Jesus? So that we can work through maybe if it is coming from somewhere or if it's just a random attack on my mind um, and walking through, but that, but then, I mean, there's been, I wish I could even talk about all of them, but there's been so many struggles, which is why I'm like, God, Gosh, Lord, just protect these women and show them that they don't have to give themselves away. Because another thing that it created was a lot of distrust. The beginning right. of our marriage was hard because I had boyfriends who were involved in watching pornography. Um, I had boyfriends who cheated on me countless times. I cheated on boyfriends. We There was just like no moral compass in my life at that time at all. It was just you do what you do and you hope you don't get caught or you hope that you don't get hurt. And so my husband was raised primarily as a Christian. And when we started getting engaged, I didn't trust anything. I was always wanting to search his phone. I was always questioning his behavior. I was always in 
The thing is, is that I knew Jesse was not these other men. Jesse was so far from who these men were. And he was such an example of Jesus to me in my life. And yet, because of the pain I had allowed myself to get into, and because I didn't walk away from these unhealthy relationships, I... I just succumbed to this jealousy and this fear and this anxiety that he was going to leave me or he was going to cheat on me. And the amount of fights it caused, oh my goodness, in the first couple of years of our marriage, it's crazy. And I would wake up in the middle of the night. I remember this so vividly and it happened often, like probably every couple of months, I would wake up at two in the morning, three in the morning in a panic, just like, you know, that feeling when something shocks you awake yeah. and your heart is pounding yeah. and it would be like, check his phone, check his phone, check his phone. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, he's cheating. I know it. Like this is God. God is waking me up, you know? And honestly, and I'd go through his phone and there wouldn't, I mean, we have had issues there. It's, we do not have a perfect marriage by any means. Um, but God has really helped us and strengthened us. And I like to say, I'm thankful to say that God has really healed this jealousy and distrust. But at the beginning, it was really difficult for me to get past what I had experienced in past relationships and to allow God to heal. But I just, one verse that really has always resonated with me and I memorized it when I was a brand new believer and it's second Corinthians five seventeen, And it says in Christ, I'm a new creation. Old things have become, Oh, I'm sorry. In Christ, I'm a new creation things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that's all things. So that when I'm struggling with shame or when listeners, when you guys are struggling with shame or with regret or with bad memories or dirty and helpless and useless, it is such a lie that you have to stay there because although sin has consequences and you may face some of the struggles and the consequences that you had when, um, when you came out of that life, God is a redeemer and he offers purity and he offers truth and he offers life and redemption. And, um, he covers us white as snow. I always love that image that even though we are scarlet and covered in sin, he washes us white as snow. And I always heard this term secondhand virgin when I was a teenager and I thought it was the weirdest thing, but I always, it resonated with me. And I thought, what would that be like to do that? And I had this longing in my heart for that, but I didn't even know where to start. And so that's why I always say, come as you are to Jesus, because truly we can't clean ourselves up. I mean, if I could have cleaned myself up, I would have. I tried so many different ways. We can't clean ourselves up. And so when I finally just told Jesus, like, I can't do this anymore. I am in an unhealthy relationship. I am so unhappy. It is toxic and damaging. I'm living this life that isn't not mine. I know that this is not what God intended for me. And I surrendered to him. A few days later, I went to my church, um, my mom's church, I would say. I went with her very occasionally when she yeah. forced me to. <laughs> um, but I knew at that moment, like, I've given my life to God and I cut off old friends because I just, not because they were the problem, I was the problem, but there was that temptation I knew I couldn't walk away from. And I bought um, a purity ring at that church. And when I put it on, it was this flood of emotion. And it was just a very symbolic thing for me that my life can start over. It wasn't anything to do with the ring. The ring wasn't powerful or magical. It was the fact that Jesus promised me a new life and that I was, my flesh was crucified if I lived in him and that he would restore me and build me back up and wash me white as snow. And I put that ring on and I just flooded tears. I could not have prepared myself for the amount of emotion I felt in that moment because I knew it was a fresh start for me. And so I have gone into my marriage knowing that, knowing I am not that woman. And although there is consequence to sin and you deal with those consequences, I'm able to live in the freedom and the truth that if I am in Christ and I've asked for my forgiveness of sin and I know that God has me, that I am free from that shame and that guilt that I lived in for so long. Yeah. And I think so many young women or older women, doesn't matter your age, you 
when you're in those types of relationships that you know are not good and not healthy, you think this is all I deserve. Like, yes. I just remember going back and forth with my boyfriend in high school and, you know, he wanted me to have an abortion the first time I was pregnant and I did and I got pregnant again and chose to have my baby and he was with some other girl. But it was just like, well, this is all I have. This is the only one person that's going to love me. And it wasn't until that broke off completely and I just surrendered to God and said, God, just like do anything with my life. Like I give it to you. And I started praying that God would bring someone into my life that loved God and loved me and would love my baby. And God did. And so I think so many young women are feeling like this is all I'm worth. I'm, I'm not going to have someone. I'd rather have this than nothing. But they don't trust that God can bring someone that's amazing or even if it, he doesn't, like the, the relationship that you will have with God is so worth mm-hmm. just just throwing those things away, those bad relationships, those those people that treat you horribly. I mean, God has so much more. And I think really it comes down to what you're saying is you have to believe that. When you put on that ring, it's like you were believing that God had something more for you. Mm-hmm. Well, in Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I, for I know the plans I have for you to give you a future and a hope. And I think that we have to come to a place where we stop trying to answer the problem on our own. And we mm-hmm. stop trying to fill our hearts with these empty things. Um, there is a quote by C.S. Lewis that has always been so impactful for me. And it says, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures fooling about with drinks and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday or vacation at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. And I think that's the thing is we are so easily pleased in our minds minds are so finite that we cannot grasp what it would look like to drop all of these idols, these things that we're worshiping above God, whether it's alcohol or sex or relationships or success, to drop those things and to replace it with the God of the universe and this infinite unconditional love that he has for us and this desire for us to be pure and holy and righteous in his sight um, and to make much of him. Because ultimately we've seen what happiness does, like what striving for happiness. So the way that I've always heard it and think it's interesting is if sex were the way to pure happiness and joy, the prostitute would be the happiest person in the world. If alcohol were the way to pure happiness, then the alcoholic would be the happiest person in the world. And we're filling ourselves with these idols that do not satisfy. And God is here with his word, his love letter to us saying, I have a story for you and I have a plan for your life. You are worth so much more than what this world tells you you're worth. And Romans 12, two says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing and perfect will. And that's the thing is it's, if we're not allowing ourselves to conform to the world's ways, because the world says marriage is for later in life, sleep around, do whatever you want to do. Um, marriage just causes divorce. Marriage is unhappy, et cetera, et cetera. But when we live according to God's word and the foundation that he has for us, it doesn't mean we're going to be without problems, but it does mean that we're going to live completely different lives. And there will be real joy in that, that surpasses all understanding rather than this temporal happiness that we are trying to live in because we're trying to satisfy that longing. But if we, when we surrender our lives to Jesus, or this is my experience, I don't have a longing for those things anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. I don't want those toxic, unhealthy relationships after experiencing the goodness of a godly marriage that is honorable and that is one that is full of joy and laughter and fun, but where we follow the word of God so that we can come together to honor him above all. And I just think I totally agree with you, Trisha. I think it is this heart of remembering and knowing and opening God's word to see what he has to say about his love for us. Yeah, and, and trusting in that. And I think even after I, you know, became a Christian and God brought John into my life, who was this wonderful godly man that did love me and did love my son and did love God, it was still that feeling like even after we married of the shame of the past. And I, I remember going through a Bible study called Forgiven and Set Free. 
And this word picture that was in there, or I don't know if it was in the Bible study or God just gave it to me as I was going through the Bible study, is me like groping around in a dark room. It's completely pitch black and I'm just groping and trying to find something to satisfy Mm -hmm. me and choosing, making very bad choices. But I was walking in darkness and I... I like I wouldn't go and make those same choices now because I'm walking in the light. And when we turn to God and open his word and let his light fill us and let his truth fill us and let his you know spirit bring light to our heart and you know remind us of his love for us, we aren't going to make the same mistakes. And so I think so many times we can almost get stuck in that shame like why did I do that or how could I have been that person and God's mm-hmm. like I have forgiven you and I want you to walk in the light and share the light with others, which is exactly what you're doing. And I think it's so important. Um, maybe those, maybe there's people that aren't living that past life anymore, but they still feel that shame. What would you say to them? Oh, I think one thing that was really transformative for me was when a pastor said, when you've surrendered your life to Jesus and you acknowledge that God created you, that he created your DNA, he knows the number of hairs on your head, the tears that you've cried. It's such an intimate relationship. And when he says that he has forgiven you for us to say that we can't forgive ourselves is to say that God's forgiveness is not enough. And that Mm -hmm. was really powerful for me because it's like blasphemous, like, Lord, your forgiveness is enough because I can't forgive myself. But who are we? Who are we to say, I was too bad. I can't forgive. When God says that he will forgive anyone who comes to him and asks in repentance. And so for, for me, at least personally, that has been incredibly moving and it has allowed me to, in the moments when I feel like I'm just sitting in the shame and I'm dirty and I'm rotten. And I mean, there's still weird things that happen. Like if I'll have a friend from high school, write me and they'll bring something up like an old friend and they'll make a comment of like, wow, I'm so interested in what you're doing now. (laughs) You're so not who I remember, you know, and it's very like passive comment. And there's that like immediate shame in my heart that I feel because I'm like, oh, there are some people who don't know that I've changed and there's this desire for me to like prove to them I'm different, but that's not what God has called me to either. He has just called me to share his word. And I think the biggest thing that has helped me is getting my mind off of myself and talking about my shame. I have friends who have struggled. They've committed adultery. I have friends who have left their husbands. I have friends who gossip and are angry and bitter at other women. And I have found more than anything live in that shame because they allow themselves to stay there. And our faith is not only a passive faith and trusting Jesus to work in us and through us. It's also an active faith in living out the commands of the Bible. And he tells us to use the comfort that he has given us to comfort others in need. And so that is what I believe so strongly is speaking out about the struggles that you're facing, speaking out about the shame, speaking out about your past sin, because there is no condemnation in Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And so are willing to share the struggles. We give others the freedom to talk about it because we're not alone in this. I mean, I saw talking about a promiscuous girl who slept around that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women feel stuck in the same situation. Situation. And I just believe there's so much for you. talking and sharing and opening. God uses our weakness for his strength and his glory. Absolutely. And I love how God is using you now through your podcast and just on Instagram. And, uh, you know, just reading through the post, there's so many comments that people are connecting with you, connecting with your message. And it's so amazing that He could use that platform. For his good. And I just love that we're in this time in history where he is using that for his good. Yeah, it's been cool. It's been intimidating a little bit. I mean, there are comments. I actually just started a TikTok. You're the first to know. I started a TikTok and I just have done it for fun, my husband and I. But last night I did a post on um, five ways a wife disrespects her husband. And of course, it's a 15 second clip. So you can't do this whole introduction of, of course, my husband loves me and I love him and he's not beating me into telling you this. But the amount of comments I got on that oh, wow. were rough. 
like just, I mean, very, very condemning, very like, are you in danger? Why? And honestly, it's just saying like, don't, don't, um, taunt your husband. Don't nag. Don't, I mean, very basic things of things that I've tried to share. And so I got some negative feedback on that. And, but I just used it as an opportunity to share, but Instagram, my account, it's at lindsay.myestis. And on that account, I feel like I've create, I've grown with such an amazing community that they've like come alongside me and God has, God has brought them alongside me to do this journey with me. And I've had very little criticism, which has been amazing and encouraging. Um, but I know that it's because it's like a Christian following and they're sweet and encouraging to me because they believe what I believe. And so that's one of the reasons I got on TikTok was to establish maybe a different group mm-hmm. of people and to challenge myself a little bit in speaking out honestly and openly. Um, but the Lindsay Maestas Instagram account has been so good. And then living the Live, Living Easy podcast has been so cool for me. I had a podcast before this. Um which was milk and honey and it was wonderful and amazing. And I just, what I'm doing now with just raw and vulnerable conversation with things that people don't usually normally talk about because it makes me feel, it makes me feel like I'm not alone in the Mm -hmm. things that I've gone through. And then I'm just hoping that other men and women can remember that they're more than their mess and that they're not stuck where they are. Yeah. And we're going to have links to all those things um, in the show notes. But I have just loved as I've you know prepared for this interview, just love the things you have to say. I've already forwarded it to some of my girls. Oh, my girls I'm so like, sweet. okay, you need to read this. And this is not what I want you to follow. And, and they will. Yeah. And I'll tell yeah. them you're on TikTok too, because that's okay. the, they love TikTok. <laughs> But you, I want people that will speak truth because I'm trying to talk to them and speak truth, but they need other people. So thank you so much for doing that. And I know it's not easy, especially when you do get that criticism and you get people that don't understand. Um, but I am so thankful that you're out there and you're sharing your voice. And I just started listening to your podcast. I've loved the episode that I'm listening to, so I cannot wait to listen more. But um, just I appreciate you and sharing your story and sharing your heart. So Thank they can you. check you out on Instagram and um, on your podcast. And do you have anything else that you just want to um, share as we wrap this up? Um, I just want to say thank you. And I love what you're doing as well. Thank you for opening the door for this conversation and for the conversations that you've had and for openly sharing about your, I know that that is not an easy conversation to have, but I know that it's one we need to hear. And so I really respect and appreciate and admire that so much. Um, but I would just say, I mean, I'm always here to talk as well. Obviously, I'm, I have two little boys at home and a husband and I'm pretty busy. But if anyone ever wants to talk about something like this, I'm always open to a conversation. I like to send little audio. I don't know if you do this, but on Instagram, the audio, <laughs> yeah. because it just goes so much faster. Um, but just that you're not alone and to not be afraid to share your heart and to talk to others because it really can bring so much freedom and transformation to your life. And if you feel stuck in a relationship or... Or um, if you feel like burdened by the place that you are at in your life, I just encourage you to open your Bible, open your Bible to the book of James and just start reading or the book of Matthew and just start reading, get immersed in his word, even if you don't know or don't understand, because his word will transform your heart and your life for good. So thank you so much for having me on. It was wonderful. Thank you, Lindsay. I just love this conversation and I hope we could connect again. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't Lindsay the sweetest? I had so much fun just connecting with her, getting to know her, and I am so thankful for her willingness to just open her heart and share the tough stuff. I know sometimes we always want to present this really beautiful image, this outward um, just presentation that we have our act together, that everything's great. And if maybe you'll just look at the pictures on her Instagram page, you're thinking, oh my goodness, this girl has this woman. She's not a girl. This woman has the perfect life, this handsome husband, these beautiful kids. But what I love, um, if you go to Lindsay's Instagram page, and we'll have the links, of course, in the show notes. But if you go to her Instagram page with those beautiful pictures, which they are beautiful pictures, the message behind each one is so amazing that 
Lindsay really peels back the layers and reveals her heart. And I think a lot of people connect with that. We try, I think, sometimes too hard to feel like we have our act together and we've never made mistakes, but people don't connect with that. They cannot relate to that. They can't, um, they don't want to be friends. They don't want to relate with someone who is acting perfect and makes us feel bad, but instead, Lindsay doesn't do that. She just peels back the later layers and says, look, it, I used to do this, but I have a new life in Christ because of his love for me, because of his goodness towards me. And, you know, she is going back to those people who maybe have the same struggles that she once had and just reaching out to them and, and showing them that they are loved, that God does love them, that God does forgive them, and that he has a good future for them. So um, today's Walk It Out verse is 2 Corinthians 5, 17, which is, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. And I am personally so thankful for that because I also am one who has made a lot of mistakes in my past. And I am so thankful that God has just cleaned me and scrubbed me and made me new and that I don't have to live under the guilt and the shame anymore. And Lindsay doesn't have to live under the guilt and the shame anymore either. So um, let's just pray about this today. Uh, Dear God, I am so thankful that we can come to you and we hand over the mess of our lives and you just do an amazing thing and that you heal us, you forgive us, you wash us so we are as white and clean as pure snow, Lord. And I know sometimes uh, we do struggle because we still have those old memories. Sometimes those old habits are hard to overcome. Those feelings of uh, worry or uh, I need to have a backup plan in case this relationship doesn't work or those feelings like I'm not worthy to have someone truly love me that I just must give my body or all these doubts and fears and beliefs that we used to have that were false Lord I pray that we can also hand those over to you and sometimes it hurts as we go back to those places and we think of who we were um, but we know that you take us back there Lord so you can bring your forgiveness to us you can bring your healing to us and that we can take that message to other people so that they may find hope and they find truth. I pray that you will be with Lindsay, be with her family, be with her as she continues to share this message of hope with other people that young people, old people will grasp this message. And because of her realness and vulnerability, that they will listen and turn to you, God. Bless her and her ministry. Lord, and maybe we have um, a young person in our life where we are just struggling because we see them making wrong choices. I pray for each one of our loved ones now who is uh, making wrong choices, Lord. And I know I have those people in my life too, that they will realize that the things of this world and the things um, that this world says will bring them happiness, that they will understand that happiness cannot be found there, but it can be only found in you. I pray that the hearts of those we love will be softened and will be turned to you and will be willing to be guided by you and all those feelings like we need to provide for ourselves and protect ourselves and find happiness ourselves, that they will be replaced with the knowledge that goodness and truth and love that you give is what our hearts really desire. So I pray for all those in our families today who are seeking um, the wrong things that they may instead seek you. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, friend, I am so thankful that you're here today. I am so thankful that um, that there are those like uh, Lindsay that will share their stories and maybe consider someone that you can share your story with. Uh, I know that it's so hard, like Lindsay said, to get out there and just pour out all the pain and all the stuff we are ashamed of. But when we can tie that story of before and our mistakes with after and after things have been transformed and uh, the change that we feel on the inside because of you, Lord, people want to hear that. They want to have hope. They want to have encouragement. They want to know that there's a better way. They want to know that uh, the shame and the guilt aren't things they have to carry forever. So for every listener out there, maybe think of someone that needs to hear your story. And it might be someone in your own home. It might be a neighbor, someone in your church, someone on Facebook or Instagram. Think about how you can share 
your story today, just like Lindsay did, and know that people out there want that hope. They want that message. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to Walk It Out. You can always find more information at walkitoutpodcast.com and all the links to connect with Lindsay um, is also going to be in the show notes. So be sure to connect with her, let her know that you heard her on the Walk It Out podcast and just thank her for her story. I know that'll make a big difference and be a huge blessing to her. Have a wonderful week, friends. Thanks for listening to Walk It Out. Head over to the show notes for this podcast and all past episodes at www.walkitoutpodcast.com. If you love the show, share it with someone you know who can make a radical difference in the world. We love new friends. See you next time.